This is Bent TV and I'm Malice and as usual we've lined up a delectable array of treats for you starting out with an appetizer of Sammy with In the Thick of It. Welcome to Bent TV In the Thick of It with Sammy. Last time we met we were having a bit of a chat about the importance of setting up new community groups, particularly a great new community group which is starting up in the Mornington Frankston area, GLBTIQ Art Connections. Michelle, welcome back to Bent. Jesse from the Dandy Rangers and many other groups and of course the infamous Tex McKenzie from the Victorian <laughs> AIDS Council Gay Men's Health Centre. Thanks now, Sammy. Michelle, the great idea of being able to set up a community-based group in your area and also based with something that's been very interested in our community with the arts is just such a great idea. You're in the process of setting this up. Now, have you been able to find um, much support within the community with the assistance of setting up your group? Um, the actual response that I had for my initial emails that I sent out just on a whim has been remarkable. Um, I've had, as Tex was saying before, like a tree of life of emails just coming in from people that I haven't even emailed, which has been absolutely fabulous. Um, you know, including yourselves, Joy, oh, just everywhere has just been such... Um, An overwhelming response. Oh, it has been. Absolutely yeah. overwhelming. Did you find that uh, when you were sort of being involved in some of the groups that you've set up over the years and been involved with Jesse, particularly with the one that you're currently doing with the, the Dandy Rangers? Yeah, um, I think um, making contact and getting the message out, as Tech said in the, la the last time we were together, um, um, is a little bit difficult sometimes. So we don't have an IT person. We've we've kind of got me in the um, we've got some other people, but I really need to get some other people involved in the Dandy Range as a gay and lesbian um, a GLBTIQ community group for people that live in the Dandenongs and in the hills um, for social activities and things like that. We just need some more people to become involved to the point where they're willing to uh, do a couple of things, I suppose. And so the community groups, and I'm also involved with a, um, as I said last time, a, um, a trivia group which is still, we've got some membership issues so we, we need a few more people. It's not like it actually takes that much time. I, I'm just really time poor, I'm a very busy school teacher so I'm just, um, I suppose my main message is that you need a bit of time and you need some support from other people in your community organisation to help out so delegation and things like that are very important. With the many years that you've been involved uh, as a, a health worker with outreach and the many other things that the Victorian AIDS Council or Gay Men's Health Centre um, provide, one of the things that they, they're very strong on is supporting uh, new community groups and providing assistance as through we've seen with Vintage Men and many other things. Do you think that one of the issues that's being faced by new community groups starting up is being able to have a resource centre or someone that they can go to like um, the Victorian AIDS? Oh look, sure Sammy, and look we used to have the Also Foundation and unfortunately yes. we don't anymore, but they used to publish um, a, a booklet called The Directory, which listed all of the different gay yes. and lesbian groups and all of the members of the Rainbow community um, in, in, the, in their pages and also on their website as well. Um, and I still use my um, also directory. The last one I think was 2011 mm -hmm. and I'm still using that but I cross check it with the internet. Mm. Just typing into a search engine of your choice, um, just whatever the name of the group might be or gay and lesbian and a suburb or depending on where people are located it could be a rural or regional area um, and just seeing if there is something already established or if someone's name pops up as being a person who is living in a particular area. Yeah. Um, because it's um, it's really important to find the person who has the time has available time. So there may be someone who's underemployed or unemployed, 
um, and maybe someone who has that time to do the IT stuff. Mm. Um, we don't which have can be, to do can the be as simple as setting up a that. Facebook page. Mm. Mm. And yeah. I think that maybe that's one of the things nowadays as we're moving into a very strong social media era is being able to have um, even a Facebook page as and some of the groups you can actually set up is either a closed or a secret group so the members do feel safe as actually being part because that's one thing I suppose we do face in our community is, is people that aren't ready to be out in public as, as being a member of the rainbow community and being able to provide, as we spoke last time, Tex, about that safe space for them. Mm. And that's absolutely one concern that I had. You know, I've had a few friends say to me, you know, Facebook page would be great. You know, get your organisational group out there. And that is one of my main concerns. But knowing that you can have it closed, it sort of gives me a bit more confidence, I guess, to you know get the social media happening. And I suppose one other thing that you may have found, Jesse, being involved with a few community groups so far is um, being able to also find funding to either um, have a website hosted and mm. various uh, funding other would be nice. Yeah, mm. I, I don't really. I, I think the community groups I'm involved with don't necessarily need funding. It's just an, ex, uh, you know, they're, they're social groups without any broader agenda. But yeah, funding for. I'm just hoping for a member to come along who wants to, you know, it's, there's a lot of, there's more and more people out there now that um, are good with websites and things like that, but they just haven't come along to become members of the Dandy Rangers or Inquisitive yet, but it might happen. But um, maybe funding opportunities, um, councils, I, I don't actually know that much about that, but I, I have been thinking about approaching the local council, seems like an obvious choice for the Dandy Rangers, so I, yeah. I should really do that. I need a, another person to go and um, another volunteer to go and do that, but I'll see if I can make the time in the next few weeks. Sometimes it can be as simple as just the everybody paying a $2 sub or a $5 sub yeah. when they attend the meeting, which can start getting a little bit of money together. And it might just be money that buys the tea, the coffee and the packet of biscuits. Or it might be that everybody takes along a homemade cake or something. And that, that requires that the, the sub doesn't need to be spent on providing refreshments, um, it might be something to do with um, hiring a space to have a meeting because as a group grows bigger, the small meeting room may, lo may no longer be appropriate. But sure, things like the local council, uh, there's the Lord Mayor's Charitable Fund, mm. there are all sorts of funds and once you get people involved who know how to write submissions, they can be really handy as well. Um, you know, to, to write submissions, to start getting that, all of that stuff together, um, to get the, the finances in. Mm. Um, because finances can be really important, even if it's something like making a banner to carry in Pride March. That's right, and it'd be wonderful to see all those community groups. Another thing that we are actually seeing now is um, we we're talking about Joy as being another great uh, GLBTI community organisation. Is now on their website they have a community directory with all the people that are doing community service announcements. Is a great way of being able to get in touch. Thank you so much for joining us on Bent TV, Jesse, Michelle. Best of luck with your new group and Tex. As always, it's wonderful to see you see you again you've been in the thick of it with sammy we'll be back soon well that was a tasty morsel thanks sammy we'll see you after these messages so for our next ben tv course we have a tasting plate of q sports for you and i hope i remember the right fork to use here's malcolm now Hello and welcome to this episode of Q Sports. I'm your host Malcolm Campbell and on tonight's episode of Q Sports we have a Antwerp Outgames theme and our main guest tonight is TJ from the Ace Girls Tennis Group. Hello Hi. TJ. Hi Malcolm. And additional guests Lorraine Little from Hello. Melbourne Spikers and Stuart Cole Morgan from Melbourne Frontrunners. Hello. Hello everyone. TJ, Ace Girls um, has been going for a while, have they? Uh, over 10 years now, Malcolm. Yes. Yes. And, and you've been the coach that whole time? I certainly have. Uh, we've been uh, going in Carlton every Monday night for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, ingrained in, in many of our psyches. And some of the players mm -hmm. have been with us uh, all that time. That's terrific. And A-Schools are heading off to the out games? We are. We are. 
Um, we we love competition, and a lot of a lot of the women do train for the uh, local competitions in Victoria and uh, in Sydney and other places in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and we we think we'll have five people that are going to Antwerp this year. Big that's contingent. That's good. And singles, doubles, mixed doubles. Uh, mainly singles and doubles at this stage. Yes. Um, do they do they pair up the mixed doubles later? Do they? Uh, well, it depends on whether you have a regular partner to mm -hmm. uh, to enter with, and mm -hmm. uh, so so most of us don't. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's all levels of uh, singles and doubles and mixed in in the out games. Um, there are grades, so there's a professional open grade, mm -hmm. and then there are A, B, C, and D grades, mm -hmm. and then there are um, age group grades as well. So oh. over 40, over 50, over 60, right. that sort of thing. That's a lot. Yes, the tennis tournament is usually very popular. I have mm. I've been lucky enough to compete in uh, all the uh, gay games since uh, 1998, as well as the out games. As well as the out games, and uh, quite often there are uh, upwards of 1,000 tennis wow. players. Wow, that's huge! It's, yeah. And you uh, obviously mm. then play wherever they can find your courts. That's right. Um, the interesting thing about Antwerp, though, is that they've managed to find a tennis centre where everyone can be together. Okay. Um, That's terrific. Which is really terrific because in mm. other cities that we've played in, like Cologne or Chicago, um, the tennis centres have been dispersed all around town mm. and you find yourself firstly playing at a different centre every day mm. and then secondly it's very difficult to uh, watch your friends play. Yes, mm. and do you know how many courts are at this centre? It's huge. It's 30... What? 30 courts or, Terrific. or something and like that and in true European style it's actually more like a country club than mm. a than a tennis uh, than a tennis centre that we would recognise uh, readily in Australia. Because like, like Melbourne Park for example. Well uh, no more like Kuyong I suppose yes. where, yes. where nice. you know you've got rose bushes around every tennis oh. court and you've got a bistro <laughs> in the centre of the courts and you've got a gym and changing mm. rooms and and so the facilities are really world class and very welcoming mm -hmm. and, and conducive to that social element as well. Oh, well, that's really important. Um, I'm looking forward to coming and watching because I like clay court tennis. That's the surface, I presume. Yes, it's, it's clay, which is wonderful to have the opportunity to play on, on real European clay. Uh, the red dirt, they call it. The, the red dirt gets in your shoes and uh, up your nose and all sorts of other if you're places. Wearing whites, you know. <laughs> well, you, you girls wear red anyway, so oh, you'll be we fine. Right. We do. But you, you don't have red socks or shoes. No, no, so everything turns an attractive uh, shade of pink and uh, there's lots of laundry. How appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> For the girls and the boys. Look, I think, um, Malcolm, both you and TJ have touched on a really important element that we've perhaps not talked about in terms of what these events can offer in the broader sense. Mm -hmm. We all talk as participating sports people, mm -hmm. but it's also about encouraging people at all levels to actually get along, either go and support and watch friends, maybe give them a massage after the tournament, but, but particularly even within participating actively in the sports, that's all levels. Well, that's um, true. Yeah. Um, it's also the socialising element. I know yeah. that in the games that I've been to, um, I've met people and now I'm friends with them on Facebook and then every four years you see mm. them at the games. Yeah. That's right. We had yeah. an amazing uh, amazing episode where some of our players met some players from uh, San Francisco yes. and then they were invited to come and stay with those people mm, mm. Uh, in San Francisco when they were travelling later that year. Oh, that's terrific. So the connections keep mm. going and then, and then the San Francisco women came to Melbourne and then we invited them to our tennis club and then mm -hmm. we all played tennis together mm -hmm. and those, those connections keep going. Um, mm. Well, that's right. And I think with the element of the internet coming in and Facebook, it's made that a lot easier. Um, and I know that after these games, we'll probably make more friends. And, and the support um, through through overseas friends or through Melbourne supporters, mm, mm. it's in a sport like tennis, it's absolutely mm. crucial because mm -hmm. if you're down there in the third set and it's in the third hour of the match and you're slightly dehydrated and, and quite fatigued and, and, and you're going neck and neck, just having that little bit of support mm. really mm. does help. Well, it's like it's equivalent to seeing the Aussies playing at Wimbledon and all the Aussie fans there cheering on their Australian player, isn't it? It is, yeah. it is. Mm. And now, and now, TJ, tell us a little bit more about Antwerp. I understand that you might be taking a few trips around the area after or during the Games Day trips. Tell us a bit more about that. Yes, Antwerp's very centrally located in Europe and, and so we're, we're planning to do some day trips 
before and after the tennis. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, uh, Bruges is mm. uh, very yeah. close by, about an hour by train. Mm -hmm. and, mm. uh, and that is a canal city, so it's mm. like a, a mini Amsterdam. Well, Bruges, uh, I understand, used to be on the North Sea. Yeah. Uh, yes, so, so on, a, on, a, on a little <laughs> bit of reclaimed land. It is, that's oh, right. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and it's a very picturesque, lovely city. And there's a, there's a film called In Bruges mm. uh, yes. that uh, people can look at if they want to, want to brush up on Bruges mm -hmm. ahead of time. And then there's Ghent, which yeah, is another equally. picturesque mm. town that you can access by train just for a day trip. Yes. Mm. And then uh, also there's, there's The Hague mm. uh, in the Netherlands, yes. which is another really uh, picturesque town. Mm. And it's, it's uh, famous in its own way. So we look forward to getting there and, and seeing the architecture and, and the museums and, and, and the chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the chocolate. Yeah, yeah, TJ, you important. want to win as well, don't you? Uh, certainly, look, <laughs> at, she's been training all day. It's not, it's not all about the chocolate and the holiday, it's the about winning. Afterwards. I, I suspect the chocolate comes afterwards yeah. for some of us, but um, yes, I've done my training this morning <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm really fortunate that I've been able to work with a physical trainer and mm. nutritionist and a tennis coach for the last six months just to get ready wow. and and um, and give it my best shot. I'm playing in the A grade, so um, oh. the competition is going to be really fierce. And and I've had the experience mm. of playing against the uh, the Dutch and the Germans and the Swiss before, as well as Belgians. So well, it's the, the, they're they're hot competitors. Well, that's great um, because you're competitive, but there will be other people there who uh, will be participating socially in the events. They're just there to make up the numbers, but have a good time. But look. Thank you very much for your time um, on this episode, TJ, and thank you, Lorraine and You're Stuart. Welcome. Thanks, Malcolm. Thank Thanks, you, Malcolm. everyone, again for tuning in to Q Sports. I'm your host, Malcolm Pam Campbell, and goodbye. Thanks, Malcolm. Have you sent us an email yet? We'd love to hear from you, so why not drop us a line on feedback at benttv.org.au or find us on Facebook. See you after the break. This is Bent TV and we're all about things queer and our next segment is no exception. Let's join Steve with Quedia to find out what the haps is with what's going on in the arts. Good evening, welcome to Bent TV. My name's Steve Pereira and you're on Quedia, our show where we explore all things queer and anything media. Eclectic is what we are, electric is what we hope we deliver. Uh, welcome back Melbourne personality and artist and bon vivant, Mark Cloth. And today we're talking to Mark about his literary output. Mark, um, as few you may not know, has been nominated or shortlisted for the Ada Cambridge Award Prize, which is a prize associated with the Williamstown Literary Festival one of the Victoria's most prestigious arts festivals, literary festivals. Mark, congratulations. Thanks very much, Steve. One perfect day. It was just a glimpse I caught of you, not quite enough to fill the gap between the knowing and deja vu, this mirror image to unwrap. Reflected there behind the mask that begs the question I must ask. One perfect day I'll be that me, you know I was always meant to be. That day will come, this pretense end. The truth revealed of my manhood, no longer so misunderstood, this broken thing only I can mend. That perfect day will come, I'm sure I'll be that me forevermore. Nice girlfriend. I tensed to stand up, clench my fist to hit the sarcastic prick with the mouth so fucking hard he wouldn't get up for a week. Claire's hand moved to my thigh to stay my rush of blood. Truth was, I usually came off second best in those testosterone fests. I didn't give the smart ass with, from that night a, a second thought until he tapped me on the shoulder a few days later. I'm Pete. Saw the Federation peak notice at the club and wondered if you had room for one more. He was too pissed the previous weekend to have any clue that our paths had already crossed. And at this distance, I had no reason to revisit my first impression. There was a part of me that still wanted to punch the shit out of this guy. But timing's everything when it comes to that sort of boy stuff. Besides which, I wasn't about to vent my spleen midway through my 
morning macchiato. Yeah, Fed will be great. See you Friday. The story goes on to talk about a very unlikely friendship taking shape between Pete and uh, the author. And over time, 10, maybe 15 years, the two protagonists get to know each other very well. Back from overseas, Pete rings and asks to get together for dinner, which I agree to. I arrived early for dinner. The first beer didn't touch the sides. Seven o'clock swung round, and what had seemed like a good idea when I told Pete that I had something to share with him was rapidly morphing into, what the hell am I doing? Followed by Pete walking in. He gave the cafe crowd his usual once over, had a cursory glance across at me and walked out. Not quite what I had in mind. Yes, Pete could be difficult on occasion. A sudden flash of memory took me back to that first meeting and the thought that all these years on, fate would take us full circle in the push and shove that never was. When I looked up, Pete was checking his watch and having a smoke outside the cafe. Sweet. I waved the waitress over and asked her to tell the guy on the footpath that there was a beer waiting for him inside. A measured breath in out and Pete was standing at my table. I smiled and said, I thought we'd agreed to meet for dinner. Pete's mouth opened and closed and opened and closed again. The longer he stood looking, the more relaxed into the me he was meeting for the very first time. My untroubled smile did nothing to alleviate Pete's wonderment. His stare never left my face as he fumbled for a chair an absent-minded, fuck me, slipped out when he finally settled at our table. Pete's eyes were doing all the talking and seeing him lost for words was an enjoyable first. It was one of those classic silences that only last a second or two but take forever to break. The anxiety I'd felt only a few moments earlier dissolved into a quiet confidence to be in the skin I was in. When I reminded Pete that I had mentioned having something to tell him, the you bastard he responded with put a grin on both our faces. Pete still had a lot to take in, seeing his longest standing, sport mad mate, primped and powdered to perfection. From my side of the looking glass, being frocked up was as seamless as breathing in and out. I could sit playing with a lock of Franny Fisher, black bob wig, without a blink of self-consciousness. But introducing that same femme self to family and friends was rarely an easy ask of them. Show, don't tell was my weapon of choice when it came to sharing the reality of me being Amanda, and Pete was getting one hell of a show. He had to sink or swim in a sea of Alua perfume a to die for, 50s inspired, floral print dress, the exquisitely cut cowl neckline flowed into a backless A line skirt, frothing at the hem with layers of black tulle petticoat, all perched on suicide high platform stilettos, finished off with lashings of mascara and the reddest red lipstick on the planet. Everyone blinks. We go on and talk about how lunch, that, that dinner went and a few incidents and then it finishes off with a final stanza of sonnet. Pete still has a myriad of questions about the anythings and everythings of my being Amanda and rock climbing is still the scariest fun thing I do. We've shared lots of meals and coffee catch-ups since that dinner and our discussions can still be feisty affairs. But that said, he does tread a little gentler whenever the conversation crosses the gender divide. I met you in my dreams, the wish I made come true. This lie I've lived, not what it seems, you came to my rescue. Across the years we were apart, you came to me with all your heart, no thought that hidden then from view, 
those dreams one day would be you. Testimony to your birthright, the truth revealed for all to see, the me I was always meant to be. My secret sister of the night, your mirror image now recast, that perfect day has come at last. For those of you who are interested, please look up Mark Cloth wherever you can. He, I'm sure you, do you have a Facebook account? I do. You do? All right. Let's not. We'll link that up to our Bent TV account. Please get onto our Bent uh, TV website and, and post your comments. Tell us how great you liked us, or if you didn't, tell us as well. You've been with Queedy again. Thank you for Mark Cloth for being with us for two episodes talking about his fabulous art. And of course, we'll be back later on the season. But thank you for joining us on Bent TV. Well, I'm completely full now, but if you think you can fit a bit more in, go to the Bent website where you can find old episodes to watch or details on joining us, benttv.org.au. And I can't wait to see you back here next week at 10. Good night.